Now we're going to have a look at the video features of the Z9. The Z9 is a very versatile camera. It's a very advanced stills camera for sports, nature, and everything that has to do with speed. But actually, it's also a professional video camera. We're going to go a bit in deep in the settings of this camera, but on the video aspects. So the first thing we, the first thing we have to do actually is to switch to video mode here on this on this very switch. It's important, otherwise you don't have access to the, the feature. So if you don't start this way, it will be difficult for you. Now, the very most important feature of this camera is the I button. The I button is the one I've set for every setting in the camera. We're going to start with this one because it goes through most of the settings that are really important to get your camera ready for shooting. So if I press on the I menu, you, you, you can see that I actually have 12 boxes that are uh, just gathering the most important settings. I have made them to my taste. You can change them in the, in the settings menu and we can show that, see that later as well. I just start from left to right, from up to down, and I will show you actually what's the, the, the importance of, of the settings. The first one is the picture control and the white balance. It's going to be the colors of your picture. It's very important, of course, to set that right, so I, I start with this one. Um, first, the white balance, for instance, here. Uh, I chose here the uh, a, a Kelvin white balance, which is a manual balance. You can choose, for instance, to make it higher or lower. As you can see, if I get it higher, it's warmer, and if I get it lower, it's, it's, it's cooler. The, 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 the colors get blue, actually. So here I've set it to 5500 uh, 5, Kelvin because that's the standards for the lighting I have. But you can also choose a number of different settings. Second layer of color, actually, it's the picture controls. The picture controls are the styles you apply to your, to your color. The white balance is basically the neutralization of your different colors and the whites and the grays, but actually the picture control gives you more to the, uh, to the aspect of the picture. Here, I've, for instance, I've chosen standard, but you can actually move to different aspects, like you could directly black and white. If I get back to standard, for instance, I can enter the menu by just clicking on the, uh, the down arrow and then you can see the different settings in terms of sharpening, contrast, saturation. It's a classic but that's where you find them and that's where you're going to tweak your files. So now we're going to go to frame size and rate. Actually it's there that you can choose from up to 8K 60p down to full HD going through to 4K 120p for instance. So it's a very large array of choices so that you can choose for your different aspects or different applications. For instance here I'm just going to shoot 4K 25p for instance. Now, actually, we're going to choose the image area. It's very important benefit of the Nikon cameras for years that we can choose from the full sensor or to the crop image. And if, for instance, if you're shooting in 4K, you can actually choose whether you have the full frame, as we, as we know it, or the DX crop. The DX crop is APS-C size. Basically, it's giving you a multiplication a magnification of 1.5 to the to the main size, but actually without any compromise on the uh, number of pixels. So you still have 4K, 25P if you use the DX. So it's it's like two cameras in one, and it's very important. So for instance, I'm going to go back to FX. Then, also a very important part of your exposure. Here, you're going to choose to activate or deactivate a function which is made by Nikon, is active delighting. Active delighting allows you to enlighten actually the shadows, and it's very important. For, for instance, you can see my subject here. My subject is dark, it's a camera, so if I just take it off the, the, uh, the active delighting, it's very dark in the shadows here. But actually, if I just switch it on and increase step by step, you're going to see actually it's enlightening the shadows. So it's a very big impact on that. And that's really important to choose the right one. So we are preparing the grading doing that actually. So now we've seen a part of the exposure and the colors of the picture. Actually, we're going to see uh, some help uh, to, to focus. And it's very important when you do the focus right, you want to do the focus right, you have to use focus peaking. I've put that in the eye menu in the 12 features because it's one of the main uh, aspects when you do manual focus or just adjusting your focus. 
So how to do it, how to do it right, basically, you choose if it's on or off. Then you have the sensitivity, so the intensity of the display of the actual focus peaking, and that's very important because you can have a more, I would say, bright areas when actually it's in focus, and then you choose your focus peaking highlight color. That means, depending on the, on the colors of the subject, you can choose between uh, red, yellow, blue, or white. Here I've chosen blue because it's very standing out and it's very nice. You see it's off, it seems to be off because it's as soon as I touch the, the, the manual focus ring that is actually activated. So now I'm, I am autofocus, but actually as soon as I touch the focus ring, it's on. And it's very convenient to have that. And as you can see, I am fo focused quite well here, but actually I am at an aperture at 2.8. That means I don't have everything in focus. As you can see on the picture here, it's not very uh, in focus. If I, if I put it in front, of course, I can sharpen it, but I don't have the whole camera uh, in focus. So what I'm gonna do is just like decrease the aperture value, and you can see actually if it's in blue from the hood to the back of the camera, that means the whole camera is in focus. This way, actually, you can actually really check if your focus is right from, from the start to the finish, and it's very important. Back to uh, the settings in iMenu, now I'm gonna choose to, to set the, the sound. There are many sub-settings, but this one is the major one. You have to select the sensitivity of, of your microphone, whether it's internal microphone, stereo, or mic, a plug-in jack on the side, and then you can choose to let the camera actually adjust automatically to the sound levels, and you can sh check the bars at the bottom of the screen, and actually, you see, if it's red, it's too high, so the saturation goes in. But otherwise, you can just switch it on and just increase up to the level it's satisfactory for you guys. So for instance, I'm gonna do hit 12 here because I can check visually that I'm actually right for the, for the sound environment. All right, and then, of course, to check it, it's very important, you have to have a, a, a headphone plugged in as well, and then you have to, to increase or decrease the volume of the headset, and that's there. Again, there are other features, but these ones are the most important. Now we're gonna go to the stabilization. This camera is a, is a professional video cinema camera. It has autofocus and stabilization. It has everything in it. And the, the part of the, the stabilization is that good that actually you can get away from a gimbal. Two aspects with the, uh, the stabilization, whether it's the VR, that means the optical and mechanical stabilization from the lens and the sensor, and that's the one which is selected right here. You can switch it off or on, you see there is no difference in the frame, and you would choose the sport one when you have a frame which is actually when you're following something very quickly, the panning is very quick. And usually, actually, the normal VR, I would say, the, I would say which is named on, is, is something that you, you, will, you will use for quite steady shots, handheld, and then you can follow quite well all and slowly. But if you do quickly, actually, you would go for sports, then it's not fighting against the lens and the, uh, the sensor stabilization. Here, we're gonna just go back to on a normal VR. The second layer of stabilization is the electronic stabilization, and this one is made uh, in real time by the uh, processor of the, of the camera, and it's adjusting the, uh, the, the, the frame based on the very small mov movements. And what it does actually on the picture, that it's cropping. It's obvious the camera needs to crop a bit the file because otherwise you cannot adjust real time actually the, uh, the, 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 the movements up and down or left and right. That's why it's a bit uh, cropping uh, the video. I'm gonna just switch it off. But if you combine both of them, actually, you can just shoot handheld and have no movement at all. You may have seen many comparisons on, on the web, but actually it's the case. Using these two ones just prevents you to use any kind of shoulder accessories or any gimbal. And now the last part, which is like the most advanced part of the Z9, it's the focusing part in video. You can actually choose whether to be in AF mode. There are three AF modes, single, just one shot, continuous, you have to press the shutter release button to be always in focus, and the full-time the full AF, that's the permanent AF that, that 
means that if you just activate it this way, you can move the camera or have people moving in front of your camera and you're actually going to have the focus all the time. And that's actually the setup we have where here we are shot and actually the, uh, the video, if I move back and forth, the, 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 the focus will follow. Now we've done actually, we've gone through the whole focus and all the eye menu uh, settings, that's the major ones. I'm gonna just give you a bit more detail about the video menu. Now we're gonna get in deep in there, just with two aspects of the video menu. We've, if you scroll down actually the video recording menu, we've been mostly through it through the eye menu. But actually there is one which is accessible only through the uh, menu itself, it's the codec. And the codec, so far, you can choose between four settings, the ProRes, H.265 10-bit, H.265 8-bit, and H.264. There is a world of difference, actually, between those different codecs. And it's all internal in, in recording. In the past, in other, in other cameras, you have the video outputs through HDMI that can give you um, RAW or, or, or or ProRes row. Here we are talking about what's inside the camera. So the capacities of the of the of the cameras are just really really advanced because you can actually have ProRes inside inside the camera. And 10 bit, as you know, is a world of difference versus 8 bit as well. So it's very important to choose the right format. For instance, the ProRes, you will actually be able to choose between the standards. SDR is standards. That means the color grading is kind of exactly the same as on the picture control, and the log. It's an N log because it's a Nikon log. So I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna apply the log so that you can see actually visually what it gives. And actually that's the way it looks. It's, it looks very much uh, uncontrasted and that's the purpose of the log, is to be graded afterwards in post-production. If you're shooting actually in log, it could be a, a, bit, a bit too uncontrasted. So you can apply actually the picture control you have set through a menu which is which can, I'm gonna show you right away. You have to go to the famous custom settings and to G video. And he, there you can go down to the video assist, J8. If you have to remember one of the settings, that's the most important one just to apply to the log, is the view assist. And even, even the name actually might not be self-explanatory, but actually view assist means if it's on, you can see right away what it gives, I'm back to the standard picture control. So in terms of uh, interpretation, of intent of rendering, that's gonna be easier to look at than actually on the log. There, there is a tip on, on, the, on the setting of the autofocus. You can actually change the way it behaves when you use it. There are two functions, G6 and G7, that are the ones to be altered for that. So you have first the speed of the AF, that means when you change the point of focus, it's gonna go whether faster or, s or slower, and otherwise it will change very, very rapidly when the subject moves itself. So first, AF, is gonna be faster if you just press this way. It could be extreme, like doing plus five or minus five. That's the speed, the pace of the AF. And the second one is the tracking sensitivity. That means if a, if a subject is followed, like uh, you're moving or a subject is moving, here you, you want to choose, for instance, that it's low, so it's the narration, the narrative is gonna be nice, it's changing smoothly or if you want to have to be like reaction, sports and stuff like that, you would, you would go too, too high. This behavior is very important in terms of rendering and in terms of storytelling, I would say. So that's where you, you want to choose it. So now we've, we've gone through the main aspect of the camera. Of course, there are many other assistants like the virtual horizon, Instagram, uh, we've seen the focus speaking. So everything that you need to assist you to make sure that the frame is right and the exposure is right are inside the camera. That's a professional video camera and that's the way Nikon built it. So thanks for watching the video on the deep dive on the video features of the Z9.